Okay, welcome to Surgical Robotics Lab 2. Uh, in this lab, we've got a marker uh, on the flange of the robot, and we're going to be using that to get used to some more of the Macademic's built-in motion commands. You guys will be doing some of it in the web interface and some of it in MATLAB, uh, but I'll just be sticking to the web interface because you guys will be using the same script as you did last week in lab 1 um, with the TCP client interface. Uh, so the first activity that we're going to do is just going to be to get us used to using a different tool reference frame now that we have an end effector and we'll be writing uh, a couple of letters on the whiteboard, maybe like the initials of uh, all of the group members. And then the last two activities, um, you guys will be talking about uh, planning an ultrasound scanning path and drawing it and then tracing over it uh, using some different motion commands uh, with a fake ultrasound probe. So in the previous lab, when you guys connected to your robot, uh, you saw that the tool reference frame looked like this by default, um, with the X, Y, and Z in the top right corner at 190 and 308. This is because the tool reference frame coincides with the flange reference frame. Because we've got uh, our robot holding a marker, and the marker's tip is slightly forward and downwards, we're going to want to set the tool reference frame as such. So I'll show you guys the web interface in a second. I've given you guys the dimensions of the bracket that's holding the marker, and you can use this to determine some of the offsets. And you're going to want to um, locate the tool reference frame along the blue axis over here, forwards, which is the z-axis of the tool reference frame, and then down along the x-axis of the tool reference frame. So in this figure, the FRF is the flange reference frame, and uh, TRF is the tool reference frame. Um, and for all of our motion commands, we're going to be expressing the tool reference frame relative to the base reference frame. So I'll show you what I mean. Right now, the flange and tool reference frames are one and the same, um, and they are at 190 and 308 relative to the base reference frame. Um, we want to keep the axes oriented in the same way as they are right now, but we want them to be uh, slightly forward and slightly down. So we're going to use the set TRF command, and since the uh, flange and tool reference frames uh, originally coincide, the parameters by default are all zero. And to move along the x-axis, we'll give it some input here. That'll move it down by 30 millimeters, and uh, to offset it by 20 millimeters in the Z direction, we'll put it in the third place there. Uh, so all of the parameters for the TRF are offsetting what we already have, and they aren't a specification relative to the base reference frame. Uh, so the 30 and 20 here is just what I've calculated, and I don't think it's accurate relative to the, uh, the bracket that you've uh, been given but it's good enough for the example. So you guys will have to do a little bit of measuring for yourself. But this is what it's going to look like after I change the tool reference frame using this set here app. So now it's down there, and that's much more uh, in line with what we've got over here with the robot. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is um, find the initial pose that we want to start the robot at. Um, so that's going to determine how high we need to keep our marker as we're dragging it along the whiteboard, and also where we're going to move the robot from its zero position uh, in the first place. So we'll go to the web interface, and we'll jog the robot until we're comfortable with where the marker is touching the whiteboard. And we'll find a good spot. So for me, maybe I'll go and then once we get really close, like we can see here, we're going to want to go to the bottom of the jogging panel, and we're going to want to change the jog speed to like 1% so that we don't smash the marker through the whiteboard, and then we'll continue to go down until we're comfortable with it. So for me, right now, I'm at uh, 37.5. Uh, and that's pretty good. So I've chosen, uh, I'll zero all my joints here. Uh, I've chosen uh, 
my start position to be 37.2, um, which is the height that I had previously measured before recording this tutorial. And then for the X and the Y, so that I could sort of start at the bottom left uh, and move my way up and across with my name, I started with 225 and 60, but that's completely up to you. Um, notice that we're not changing the Euler angles or the rotational properties in any of the commands. Um, it's staying as is because we just want the marker to be pointing straight down the entire time um, so that we can just write as simply as possible. Um, so to get to the first position that we calculated by jogging the robot, we're going to want to use the move pose command. Um, and that's the only one that's the move pose command, the rest are move lit. And this is because um, we can't move linearly from the zero position uh, because the robot's at a singularity. So from the zero position, we'll use move pose to put the pen on the page. And then from there, we'll use move lin for the rest of the points on the letters. Uh, to determine the rest of the points on the letters, you can, uh, you can draw it out if you'd like. You can draw all the letters you want and determine how high and wide you want them to be. Um, and then from that, you can just deduce what the X and Y points are on the base reference frame, knowing that you're starting from whenever you're starting X and Y values up. Um, so that shouldn't be too hard. Another thing to remember is that you need to lift the pen off the page when you're going between your letters, unless you can manage to write in cursive. Um, so those are pretty much the only things to note for activity one. Uh, make sure you use move pose uh, in step two to get your initial contact point, then you'll be using move lift for the rest of them. And uh, these are uh, things that you've done in the first lap, but you can read about again in the programming manual if you'd like. Uh, and then one more thing to note is that you can change the velocities and accelerations using other quick commands that you can access down here. Um, so you can control the robot's velocity and acceleration both angularly for each joint and uh, in Cartesian space relative to the flange. Um, so for me, I've used the set joint velocity instead of 250% of its maximum uh, joint velocity. Um, and this is really only useful for the move pose command. The move pose command will move all of the joints of the robot uh, the way that they need to be to obtain the specified pose so that they stop and start at the same time. Um, so even though you're giving it Cartesian commands, this is sort of a joint command, uh, but the move lin uh, motion commands will require some kind of Cartesian velocity and acceleration control. So I've set the Cartesian acceleration very low to 15, and I've used a command called set blending set to 75. Um, and what blending does is it allows the robot to interpolate between a set of points so that instead of having sort of like a blocky piecewise letter, you can use more of like a continuous curve. And this curve will look nicer for higher levels of uh, blending and lower accelerations. Uh, but obviously I don't want my marker to never speed up at all. So I've set the acceleration to at least something moderate than 50. Uh, yeah, so I'll show you what that looks like for me. Here we go. make sure that you zero all of the joints afterwards so that you can take the whiteboard out without smudging it. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, for activities two and three, we're gonna be drawing a square wave using two different kinds of motion. Uh, the first one, we're just gonna draw out a square wave path that we intend to trace with a transducer. So it can be done the same way as you did to plan uh, your your initials drawing. So in a lab manual, you've been given uh, instruction to scan an eight by eight centimeter area, uh, centimeter squared area of tissue. Um, so the peaks and crests will be two centimeters and there will be four of those. And then the amplitude of the wave should be eight centimeters. So you can pretty much draw this the same way as you did your initials, um, jog it to find an appropriate starting point and then add offsets or you could do it a little bit differently and learn 
the move linear relative to the tool reference frame command. So for me, obviously, you're going to have to change your tool reference frame to what you did in activity one. Mine is a little bit different here. Um, I, I did it slightly differently, but you'll have to set your tool reference frame. Uh, you'll have to move pose to your initial position. And then if you want it, uh, rather than using the move lin commands, you can use move lin relative to the tool reference frame, which is this guy. Um, and you can just move uh, using offsets of 20s and 80s in the blue Z and green Y directions. Uh, so this is sort of similar to setting the tool reference frame in that like you're you're just adding offsets as parameters rather than providing a whole set of Cartesian coordinates and Euler angles. Uh, and this is what that will look like for drawing a square wave. zero the joints at the end of that script as well. Uh, so that's activity two, and keep in mind I did this in the web interface, but you guys will have to do this in MATLAB using the TCP client interface, the way that you did it in lab one with the right line and then whatever parameter that you've assigned to the robot. Uh, yeah, so in the next activity we're going to go over this with the ultrasound probe. In the final lab activity, you guys are going to be given a mock ultrasound probe, like this one, to put into the bracket that was holding your marker. It's just a 3D printed part with an eraser on the end of it. Um, and you'll be using this to erase the path that you had previously drawn in lab activity 2. So the difference between uh, the movement that you did in activity 2 and the third activity is that you need to keep the wide edge of the probe perpendicular to the path at all times, meaning that you need to now rotate about one of the axes of the tool reference frame at each corner. Um, so there are a few things that you need to pay attention to there. Uh, first things first, you don't need to have the same starting point for lab activity two and three, uh, because it's hard to find one that works uh, with the joint space of the robot. Um, it's pretty tricky to get a starting point that you can draw uh, both ways. So if you guys move your whiteboard so that you can uh, you can erase it properly, uh, that's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take marks off for that. Um, so in the web interface here, uh, you guys are going to need to first set your tool reference frame to um, what you see uh, for the probe hanging down here. Uh, it will probably be about the same uh, in terms of the Z offset and then slightly different in the X offset because it will be hanging lower down. What I have in the web interface here is not accurate to what you guys should be doing. Um, but it's important that your tool reference frame assignment is accurate because um, if you're going to rotate about one of the axes to rotate about the probe um, and the probe isn't directly on that axis, it'll move in a circle around what you're, uh, what you're moving around. Um, and you won't get the path that you want on the whiteboard. So make sure that your tool reference frame is set accurately. Um, you won't need blending for either of the second or third activity, because you need a, like a nice square wave. Um, and yeah, so I've used the move linear relative to the tool reference frame command again. Um, if you want, you can try to use the base reference frame. Uh, but just for consistency, I've done this. You can pretty much use the same Cartesian commands, but in between each one, you're going to need to rotate about one of the axes of the tool reference frame. And you'll alternate between 90 and negative 90 degrees, because uh, you can't just keep rotating 90 degrees in the same direction every time. Uh, the robot doesn't have the, the joint capabilities to do that. Uh, and you're going to be putting this rotation argument in the fourth uh, parameter of the move linear relative to the tool reference frame because that is the x axis's Euler angle parameter. So uh, that will be alpha over here. So I'll show you what that looks like. So it'll rotate in one direction, and then in the opposite, and then back again. Now 
that's it for the lab. Uh, so you guys will need to keep in mind that you'll be taking a photo of the initials that you guys will write on the whiteboard for the first activity. Uh, and then make sure that you save the map lab scripts that you've made for the square wave using um, no rotation and then the third activity, save the map script using some rotation as well. Um, you're going to want to take some videos as well that you can submit and um, in, the, in the lab we'll come by and see what's going on. Um, so no write-up for this guy. I'll see you in the lab. Good luck guys.